The web probably represents one of the most exciting development and programming environments available today. We've seen how you can build web applications, and now web applications are sort of taking over the space that was for years populated by desktop applications. So I can build entire um, sort of media players, I can build entire desktop sort of publishing suites and other tools online in the browser. And I think that that's going to be where more and more development, more and more software distribution goes on. So rather than installing a software package onto your machine, you'll just go to a website and you'll use a tool that's provided over the internet. Now, the interesting sort of historical quirk that comes into this mix is JavaScript, because JavaScript is a language that has dominated the web space because it's, in, it's supported by all major web browsers. And so if you want to write something that's really cross-platform, JavaScript is what you have to use. However, there are clearly going to be in the future evolution in terms of how we can build web programs. This just sort of has to happen. I mean, JavaScript is fun. It's, it's a really interesting historical accident how JavaScript has sort of taken over the web development space, but it can't last. It has to end. There has to be you know, new languages and new tools. Um, sort of a transitional technology might be something uh, called WebAssembly. So what is assembly language? Assembly language is, is what traditional programming languages get compiled down to. So I take a program that's written in C or C++ or Go or Rust or whatever, and there's a tool, a piece of software called a compiler that takes the source code and compiles it down into assembly. And assembly is on some level still code, but it's code that the machine understands how to interpret. What that means is it'll, that gives me sort of a common point where I can write code in all of these different higher level languages and it's all as long as I have a compiler that understands how to generate a particular type of assembly, I can compile that code down and I can run it on a bunch of different machines. And that's sort of how we've built software and that's what's allowed us to use a bunch of different programming languages to build traditional uh, software that runs directly on hardware. Now WebAssembly, well one way of approaching this is to essentially say, okay, Rather than having the browser interpret a language like JavaScript, let's have the browser support some sort of assembly type language. Maybe this is uh, something sort of like Java bytecode or something like this, but a lower level subset, and then I can compile a bunch of different languages down to this. So people are already starting to explore this idea. There's a, process, there's a project called asm.js, which is tough to read. Uh, let me kind of... Uh, kind of highlight this. So if you Google asm.js, you can find um, this, this page and some information about this project. So asm.js is not a new language. Instead, what it is, is it's a subset of JavaScript. So what these developers are trying to do is say, hey, JavaScript's already out there. It already works. So if I want to be able to compile a bunch of other languages, let's say I want to write uh, front-end web code in C for some reason, which I think is a terrible idea, or Go, or some sort of other language, or Java, or whatever. How am I going to run that in the browser? The browser doesn't know how to interpret that. But what if I could take that code, compile it down into JavaScript, into a subset of JavaScript, because I want to support only very simple operations. And then what asm.js allows you to do is to perform various optimizations on that code in a way that's similar to where how a compiler normally would, simply because the language is so restricted. And the fact that asm.js is such a restricted subset of JavaScript gives you the ability to perform various optimizations that would be much, much harder to do. So you can think, you know, think of, if you know anything about assembly language, you can essentially take JavaScript and you can use very small subsets of JavaScript to reproduce the type of thing that assembly language would normally be able to do. Adding numbers together, moving numbers from one place in memory to another place in memory, etc. So, you know, I can uh, map most assembly languages onto a very small subset of JavaScript and then use that as a place where I can compile a bunch of other things down to. So this, again, you know, maybe sort of a transitional technology on our way to WebAssembly. Uh, the nice thing about being able to do this on top of JavaScript is it already works. If I can produce an asm.js compiler for a language, I can compile down my code into that and run it in today's web browsers with no change to the web browser required. However, I am fairly confident that in the future, whether or not we're talking 10 years or 50 years, we will see web browsers be able to support 
much uh, a very different set of programming technologies. You know, JavaScript has had a great run, and JavaScript is you know a very fun language to program in, and is enabling all these really cool web tools and web applications. But we have to sort of move past that, and I think what we'll see is a programming environment where in the future you won't have to write your code in JavaScript to run in the browser. You can choose lots of other languages. There'll be some type of WebAssembly type technology that will allow those languages to run in the browser and achieve really good performance.